Who exactly is Raid Melky, better known as the rapper Raid, or R-A-E to the motherfucking D? R-A-E to the motherfucking D. R-A-E to the motherfucking D. R-A-D to the motherfucking D. R-A-E to the motherfucking D. R-A-E to the motherfucking D. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Raid is a rapper from Australia. He's interesting to say the least. Let's listen for a bit and see what you think. Now I first stumbled across Raid in 2012, 2013, probably on the cringe subreddit, maybe the crappy music subreddit. There's plenty of bad music out there, especially you could find on these subreddits of individuals of various genres and talent. But to me, Raid's really stuck out amongst the rest of them. Sure, there's been other musicians like Mark Gormley who've gone on to have cult followings. And Raid can as well. I, I see his stuff every once in a while posted on Reddit. But I still feel that more people need to experience Raid for who he really is. I've seen Raid described as many things. From the forefather of mumble rap, asthma rap. There's a lot of very interesting terms about him. And listening to his music, you could always hear him just offbeat. And yet, he seems to be on beat. He seems to be on his own beat that's different than the one we hear. Take a look at all his tracks he has available. It's all kind of like that. There's plenty of bad musicians out there that you could find on crappy music, and heaven forbid, go listen to the radio, and especially with hip-hop, there's a lot of mediocrity. But Raid really stands out from the rest. There's something oddly fascinating about him that I find some ways like Mark Gormley. But with this video, I'm not really going to look much at his music. But instead, I want to look at his movie. Yes, Raid had a movie that he writ wrote produced, directed, put together, and it's utterly, utterly fascinating. And it needs way more views than it currently has sitting on YouTube. In a way, there's a lot of similarities I see between Raid and interesting film directors like Tommy Wiseau or, or Neil Breen. But while those two are more shrouded in mystery, Raid lays out a lot about his life. And yet, I'm still confused and perplexed of who really Raid is. For every answer that's given to us, it seems like five more questions pop up. Now that we've covered that, the rest of the video, I'm going to cover two more things. Firstly, we're going to look at this movie, still flowing, and do a breakdown of it and give a little review about it more at the end. And afterwards, I'm going to talk more about just who Raid is. Now, just who Raid is comes from watching the movie, it comes from putting together research from some of his music, from Reddit, from MySpace, from social media, just try to piece together who this incredibly interesting individual from Australia with his hip hop ability that's not really like anyone else. And we start off with absolutely nothing for about the first two minutes. Did Raid forget to clip this out at the beginning of iMovie? Or Windows Movie Maker? Or whatever he used? And after that, we get a little bit here about his money that he wants from you and that you could donate towards. And here's his bank account. Now, I guess this is a bit before Patreon or anything. So here's his information. I have not tried myself selling the money, but if you want to, feel free. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, here we go. Here's some of those raid beats I know and love. Oh, I'm sorry. R A E do the motherfucking D. Listen to that beat though. I know whenever I, I think of R sorry, Raid oh I'm sorry, R A E to the motherfucking D, whenever I listen to his beats, I always imagine Death Grips and I always imagine MC Ride rapping over it. And I know there's a whole bunch of remixes online or mashups where people have done that. So anyone who's skilled at that out there, I'd love you to take some of these backing tracks from Raid and oh sorry, R A E to the motherfucking D and put MC Ride over them to hear how it sounds. Ah, uh, based on a true story. We're going to come back to this later, and we'll have stuff in the uh, description if you want to cut ahead more to his story behind him that we've gotten pieces of over the years. But let's just focus on the movie for now. Tripla Productions. Triple Triple H Productions? Triple H? Is, is that what he's going for? Ah, uh, here is our fearless protagonist. And I have so many questions to ask right off the bat with this setup he's got. Far right, we got him on this Mac using what looks like to be Reason, which is a music production software. Looking at the middle monitor, just <laughs> with nothing on it. I think is that Windows Vista or Windows XP? I'm not sure. And then same with the far left screen. But right off the bat, where's the keyboard raid? Do you, do you even use that? I have so many questions. We're off to a great start here. It be just like a one-way ticket like that walking down the stream. Ah, those raid beats and those raid rhymes. I have no clue what he's trying to get at, what he's trying to say, but there's just something so oddly intoxicating about it. You seriously need to consider staff shortages? I need a new job. Well, this shit is too much for me. That right here doesn't give up. He's been calling and rapping to the receptionist. <laughs> Could you imagine being the receptionist picking it up and there is Raid, sorry, R-A-E to the motherfucking D on the other line, just rapping away the way he does. How would you react to something like that? It's a real worry. Yeah, Phil's been arcing up about what happened to him at Crown. He's been dialing up directly and making threats in revenge for what you're There's on. mention here of Crown and he's referring to Crown Casino. Uh, we're going to get back more to that later because that covers more of the whole based on the true story part. Well, better him than us. He's a sexy freak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, he certainly is a sexy freak. I mean, look at him. Now we kind of got the gist of the story here that something that Ray knows too much of and he's got to go, as this guy says. And of course, we all know it's the uh, subpar acting, sound quality filming, but that's to be expected with these kind of movies. Fortunately, it does get wet more in the way later, but we'll get to that. Look. I need you to sort it out. <laughs> we have a lot of these moments here where there's going to be these little sound stabs throughout the movie. They're pretty good. We see a police officer arriving at Raid's house, and we're supposed to, I guess we're trying to supposed to be hearing him talk, but I can't hear you over the sound of the wind. Are you Raid Melky of 16 Fairbanks Street, Booth? What are you doing? I don't know, I'm asking the question. Are you Raid yeah. Melky of 16 Fairbanks Street, Booth? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I love this guy. Are you sure? Are you sure you're Raid Melky? Uh, Mr. Wodinsky has been granted an intervention order by the Victorian mm -hmm. Magistrates Court. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. Mr. Wodinsky. Wodinsky? Wodinsky has been granted... Mm -hmm. Ah uh, ha ha, Wadinsky, Wadinsky, that's funny. <laughs> uh, they're going to riff on this for a while, so hold tight. Could you sign a copy of the receipt of the order for me, sir? Yeah. <laughs> it's like this one moment here where he looks right at the camera. It's like you hear that record scratch and it goes, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up here. Have a nice day, sir. I'll try. Thanks having met it. you has already made my day. Thanks for this, man. Already having you as met my day, could you actually imagine meeting Ray? That's more like making your year or your life. Well, having met you has already made my day. So nice, he says it twice. And that's one thing you'll find with this movie. Scenes that should be a minute or two end up going way longer. This scene in total goes, you know, about, hmm, like four minutes or something when it could have been done in a minute or two. Oh my god, this movie's over two fucking hours. Jesus Christ, let's get settled in here. What's, what, hey, what time is it, man? 1.13. 
1 13 yes p.m. <laughs> 1 p.m. i just love how much emphasis he puts on that like it's clear it's not 1 13 a.m come on take a look at this guy's youtube hits now he's original and that's exactly what we need oh he sure is original you don't even know where to start with that do you this guy he's had a heap of heat He's really dedicated to his style. Oh, he's definitely dedicated to his style, that's for sure. And then here's this movie's, I'm going to call him E from Entourage. That's that's what he looks like. Yeah, he looks like the Australian E. One of the few generally good things about this movie is this woman's legs. Yeah. Dude, I just lost my job, man. I need to... What kind of job do you think Raid lost? So many questions with this movie. Cool, man. I'll see you soon then. His love also love that he's playing with that remote control like acting. And now we have one of Raid's friends come by to have a little chat. Just a little chat. You know what, this movie is going to go much longer than that. So, I was on your MySpace page last night. Yeah. Uh, on the MySpace page. Now that is a throwback. More, more fines? Mm. Oh, are you going to pay them this time? Mm. Again, he's talking about more fines. What kind of things is he talking about here? Is it more to do with this restraining order? Is it something else? Again, so many questions. Whatever it is you're going through in your head, mm. you'll be okay. You know that, don't you? Mm. Oh, that's my phone. And what the fuck were those? Is some kind of subliminal messaging from Raid? What's going on here? We cut back to these record people here who want Raid gone, and they're talking about how he's sending in more threats and that he was mentally ill. Again, we get a little more information here about this, based on the true story part, about this bomb hoax and this Crown Casino, but that's more. We'll get more into that later. His rap sounds dangerous. He gives me goosebumps. I'm kind of starting to like this freak. Oh yeah, that <laughs> rap is dangerous. You know, she wants the R-A-E to the motherfucking D. He orchestrated a bomb hoax, guys. A freaking hoax. There's gotta be more to this. What the hell was that noise? It sounds like something straight out of a Silent Hill game. I found this tape in his file. It wasn't a normal bomb hoax. It was a tape where he sent him to Crown Casino a week before it starts. I still don't understand why he sent this tape into Crown. And then here we get some of this weird, weird echo. Again, like it's going to become more of a problem later in the movie where the sound quality really takes a dip and unfortunately gets in the way of this classic. What is this tape? Does anyone have any insight into what it is? And I can't hear you over all the sound. What is going on? Turn it down, please. I can't hear what's going on. Raid, where is the sound guy? To summarize this scene, they want Raid taken down. What this tape is, I have no idea, but they just want it get done. And again, it's going to be repeating throughout this movie. Here's a scene that goes on way too long that could have been done in easily half the time. Oh, great. Here we go. Here comes another raid track. Listen to it again. Listen to that weird rhythm. And just again, imagine MC Ride from Death Grips rapping over it. And we cut now to this group of outstanding young gentlemen, and we have Raid approach them, and he talks about wanting to get another gig, over and over. Again, barely hear it because of the sound quality. The fuck you looking at, you bitch? Don't call me a bitch. Look, look, man. Everyone, go inside. Going, and then there's like this weird dub thing that seems to happen here. It's so weird. It's so perplexing. And again, this wind. Hello, you gotta do something about that sound. And speaking of sounds, we have another one that sounds straight out of a Silent Hill game. 
So actually what I will commend this scene though is at least it got done much sooner than the other ones <laughs> going too long, but well, we'll see how things go with that. And we cut to another scene of a woman who has the lucky chance of listening to Raid on the answering machine, and we get this weird quality. And she says it gives her goosebumps, and again, seems like another lady who wants to R-A-E to the motherfucking D, if you know what I mean. We cut back to Raid, who's out hanging out with a friend, and they're making these weird robot noises like R2-D2. <laughs> And this guy is hanging with, he's kind of like a cross between Tommy Wiseau, Chris Angel, the vampire. So I guess really, uh, I guess that's a vampire. We get a little more insight here into what's going on with Raid about getting all these rejections from record labels. And that explains the beginning of all the mail he was throwing out. It becomes very clear at this point that they're just shooting out in public. You could see some people earlier looking at the cameras and whatnot, and they're just kind of going with it. Now, I'll show you later that there is actually a script for this <laughs> as I look through some photos, but uh, it, it's, it's just very clear that they're just kind of going with this. They run into a friend of Raid's, this blonde friend, and we spend the next minute of the camera just circling around them, and we get really loud music. And I have no clue what they're talking about. I could get some words here and there, but that's it. <laughs> We cut back to the three record people who are out looking for Raid. <laughs> I have to say, what's this jacket this guy's wearing? It looks like something that Nigel from Spinal Tap would be wearing. And now they've arrived in Melbourne, and now they're go sorry, Melbourne. Sorry, that's my terrible Australian accent. I apologize. Now they've arrived in Melbourne, and now they're going to go out to find Raid. And here comes another slamming Raid track. And again, let's just imagine MC Ride from Death Grips rapping over this one. Again, with the sound, we can't hear anything this guy is saying. And he's enjoying some food. He's got his liquor, and it almost bumps into this guy, and, well, that's the end of that. Back to our record producer people, and <laughs> I love how she asks this uh, driver about he's into rap, but he's more of a jazz guy himself. I'm not really into rap anyway, I'm more of a jazz guy, so, yeah. Yeah, it's right. Now, it might be the accents, but my goodness, I cannot understand a word they're saying because of the volume mixing. Jesus, Raid, what's going on here? What a real clever, clever uh, error to me then. Yeah, what was that, Tony? Because, mate, I'm um, trying to set a room from right to left. Well, this just gets better and better, so why, um, <laughs> what a clever uh, error. So when I was watching this first, this scene just really made me stop where we go back to raid and his friend talking and his friend starts talking about how he wants to go to the u.s or turkey <laughs> that's two very different choices about doing interior decorating i was gonna go u.s maybe turkey for what man i want to keep doing my interior decorating stuff so it's true huh? i heard that yeah you know i've always been into that sort of stuff and it's, it's something that I really want to do, you know. Like, but he's not sure if he, you know, if he wants to stay around Melbourne, he wants to leave. And I remember thinking, holy shit, are they are they doing character development? And I'm just thinking here, like, what are they going to do with this guy? Is he going to go throughout the movie? Is he going to change his mind? And he's going to stay in Melbourne? Or is he actually going to go through with it? There's just so many things that could go with, with this guy. Like, what's going to happen? And it's sure, I hope it's not something that the film decides to drop later whatsoever. Mickey! Hey, Mickey! Mickey, Mickey! Mickey Blue Eyes, what's happening? Yeah, and there's Mickey on the phone. Yeah, Mickey! I had a feeling you come through for me tonight. Cool, cool, cool. We're running away. I've got Nemo with me. <laughs> He's got Nemo with him. <laughs> and of course, oh my god, when you first said this, I just burst out laughing now. <laughs> oh, Nemo. Of all the names. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I know that's a name, but of course I can only now associate that with a... Uh, animated fish thanks to a movie back from the early 2000s 
We cut now to where one of the record people who wants Ray dead meets up with the drunk, disabled man we saw earlier who was eating burger and drinking alcohol. And it's clear now that he's a hitman. <laughs> of course, this hitman so far looks so disabled. He makes the hitman in Maholland Drive look like Agent 47. And he wants him taken out now. He just knows too much. I love this picture they show here. It's only a face a mother could love. Just kill a cat! Now this hitman is asking for 300000 up front and 300000 when it's done. The other guy mentions that don't stuff it up this time. <laughs> Again, I have so many questions in my head. Okay, as long as you do it right, don't stuff it up this time. Not like you did last time. Now it's clear because he's giving the images of Raid that this is the first time he's going after Raid, but who did he go after before? I got so many questions there once again. And how did he screw it up? And if he screwed it up, why didn't they go with someone else? And if he did screw it up, why are they paying him so much up front? And this makes no sense and so many questions, but whenever something gets answered in this movie, there's just going to be about 10 more questions that pop up. That's the story of Raid in his life. It's like watching an episode of Lost. And we cut back to Raid and <laughs> Nemo as they go to Mickey's place. And I have to say, this track here is pretty slamming. You know, I, I have to be honest, I, I find his backing tracks are, are pretty decent at the most part. There's some interesting things going on there. Maybe they're not mixed so well, but, but there's just something really endearing about them, I find. Oh boy, here we go with the sound again. The track is mixing in with the dialogue that's going on, so we can't hear fucking shit with what they're saying. Here again, we get another mention of the casino. And again, <laughs> there'll be more in the end of this video, more of it in the description. But it's always just funny how they keep mentioning it. <laughs> I love this woman so much. She gives so many great reaction shots. And a lot of them should become gifts. And actually, on one website, I did find some who made it, which is great. Uh, she's either in Super Love Drugs or look like something out of a David Lynch movie. And for the next little while, again, the scene just goes on and on and on. And we can't hear fucking shit because of the audio mixing. <laughs> he does go into more about this whole uh, casino thing, but again, so much of it is hard to hear. And this scene goes on for about six minutes, and there's barely anything we could get from it besides this woman's hilarious reactions. It's because it's so fucking hard to hear what they're saying. Which is a real shame about this movie. I, I just really want to know what's going on and what the dialogue is. But it's just such a strain to hear it. After six minutes, Ray decides to leave for a bit and the hippie lady decides to join him. <laughs> I love the, the weird zoom cut. Just like one of those weird stock things you find in iMovie. And here comes one of my favorite things that we've been waiting for this movie that comes a bit about around the 34 minute mark is we finally get a Raid freestyle. I had to I tried slowing this down and listening to it. I was able to pick out a few things here and there. I think he starts with, you know I deserve this, preserve this, even the birds and the bees see and heard this. And that's where I get off. There, he mentions a lot about birds and the bees, herbal G, burning G's, burning Jesus, third degrees. I think he mentions Harry Potter at one point too. If anyone could translate this and figure it out, please, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to actually figure out what he says. We cut back to the party here and, well, I guess the after party where everyone's out and about, sleeping, hungover. We get some more raid wrapping. He's mentioning stuff about Rubik's Cube, Magic's Cube. I have I have no idea what he's going on with it. Do you play with your Rubik's Magic Cube? 
do you play with the Rubik's Magic Cube? I'm sure you got a Rubik's Magic Cube. Stop playing with the Rubik's Magic Cube. Rubik's, 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 Rubik's,
They try to stop me, they try to pop me. Pin me to my bones, tap to my phones. Clinic sedated, but my rap shook their bones. It was like, lyrics, 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 controversial, underground, non commercial. Hip motherfucker, critical, and now later, legally violated, all motherfucking down. Nah, no, I'm using the Jews, I'm confused. Man, I see motherfuckers pop the fuse. Now they wanna know, my fellow rellos, hello. So hard for me to be mellow, no, I ain't yellow. This gets deep for me, people like a creeper stalking sleepers, man. And if it seems to do, put the beaters back on, put the city back on, cause I keep beating back on, and beating back on, keep on beating these bones. And again, I have to slow this down and try and break down what he says. I get bits and pieces of it, but let's take a listen. What I got here is they try to stop me, try to pop me, pin me to my bones, tap me to my phones. He says something about being sedated, something about controversial, underground, non-commercial, more confusing stuff. They want to know, hello, fellow, yellow. That's all I got. These guys are just watching in utter amazement. This is probably my favorite line. <laughs> I don't know if it's my favorite line in the entire movie. So you're a rapper. But just <laughs> when he first said this, I just burst out laughing. So you're a rapper. And yep, guess what? He keeps going. Style so unique, I'm so authentic, flavors got hundred more doubles on his lyrics, got me with the capture special moments that children missing now when I'm in action there in school. True man, government doesn't mark me for it. Wrap the truth. More talk about the system. We get another one of those weird subliminal flashes again. What Raid's trying to tell us, maybe to donate to his bank account. The next morning, Raid returns to his car and it starts. Okay. Raid returns home. His door is just unlocked. All right. All right, Raid. I guess how things roll in Australia. We spend the next two minutes of Raid walking back and forth in his living room. We got this weird echo effect, and I guess it's trying to say, like, the, he still has the halluc hallucinating maybe in his mind there, where all his thoughts are thinking. Again, with the sound mixing and the echo, I have no clue what he's saying whatsoever. This goes on for, oh my god, about two minutes. After these two minutes, Raid heads out to his garage and we get another one of those subliminal flashes and he taps this poster on the wall that says, Rock Guru Stocked. I'm going to show it here. We're going to get more into this later as it gets more into that uh, true story stuff about the casino and the producer, which is pretty interesting. Hey, Raid, why do you throw the Canadian flag like that? Come on, man, you're better than that. Does Raid, did Raid just pull out the script? What's that over there? Is that the script? I got so many questions. He starts mentioning bipolar ugh, and, and depression. He starts doing a little f small freestyle around diagnosis. Oh, this gets a little uncomfortable here and this maybe <laughs> explains more uh, about him. And he starts trashing the garage. Now this is definitely no Tommy Wiseau in the room ending where he trashes it or Citizen Kane where at the end Charles Foster Kane is smashing up the room. Not even close. We cut to later with Ray driving and he goes past the people who chastised him at the restaurant and <laughs> I just thought, I guess he must have noticed them and he just reverses back. With his newfound confidence, I guess after that kangaroo blood, he chastises them and tells them, say my name. I don't like DJ Khaled. Say my name, baby. DJ Khaled. Say my name, baby. DJ Khaled. Say my name. Say my name. <laughs> You got this guy saying his name, just not R A E D, but R A E to the motherfucking D. Of course, one time he says R A E D to the motherfucking D. So Ray did that. R A E to the Ah, uh, now we get to the church scene. There's so much to dissect here with this whole church scene, especially the, the first part here where he's walking up to the door. He obviously put some time into this shot here to get kind of that Christ-like figure in the cross and, and just the way the door is open. I have to actually kind of commend here it is 
symbolic in a way. It, it, part of me feels like it might have just been a complete accident, but but who knows? It's it's actually really quite interesting, and I had to watch it a few times over just to make sure I saw it properly. Buckle up, he's, he talks to Father John, because this one's going to be a while, and unfortunately this is where the sound quality really plays a big part here, where you can hear fuck all. There's a few things here and there he talks about. He mentions something about Jesus and donuts. Jesus might be a woman or transgender. We get another one of those flashes. We hear him talking about he needs a guide to follow Jesus and that he hears the devil, stuff about Prince of Lies. And this goes on and on and on. And once again, you can't hear fuck all because you can hear the traffic. You get the reverb in the church. And it's really too bad because I would really, really love to hear what's going on here. We cut back to the record people who want Ray dead, and he has a little video that they're watching of his. And he mentions he wants Chappelle Corby to be released from jail on October 31st, 2012. Translate this for you. Mr. President, October 31st, 2012, you must have Chappelle Corby released. Uh, Mr. President. Happy Halloween, trick or treat, motherfucker. Now, I went and looked up Chappelle Corby, and here's some information on her. Chappelle Corby was arrested in Indonesia for smuggling cannabis in. She spent nine years imprisoned. She was finally released in the 10th of February, 2014. So a little, you know, a year and a half past Raid's date, but, well, she eventually got out. I wonder how much Raid helped uh, shorten that time, because she was actually sentenced for 20 years and ended up spending about nine Back to the church, again with the reverb, can't hear jack shit. I mean, a few things he mentions about Satan being on his back, keeps playing with his lighter, he does a few freestyles here and there. Ah, and he just keeps going. And this scene in total is, uh, oh Jesus Christ, it was about 10 minutes. My goodness. And of course you couldn't hear most of it. Oh, raid, 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 raid. What are we to do with you? We cut outside Raid's house where we have the hitman see Raid walk, uh, leave the house, probably going for a walk. And the hitman decides just to wait for him to come back. We cut ahead where he's now sleeping. <laughs> just love how he has his gun on his lap. Did anyone not see this? Anyway, Raid comes back, goes in. <laughs> the guy calls up his employers and tells him he's not here. They gave him the wrong information, even though he just saw him earlier walking away from the house. What the fuck's going on, man? You want me to do this fucking thing? You send me to the wrong place. How am I supposed to do anything fucking properly? If you don't give me the right information. Did he not try to bother and go inside or knock on the door? Oh boy, $300,000 for this guy. My goodness. <laughs> Cut to the re record label's uh, receptionist. You could hear Ray talking in the same room as her. Hello? Hello, I want to speak to your boss urgently. He's busy? More weird synth stabs, and then this one <laughs> at the end, I don't know, it just reminds me of, I don't know, something from the 90s as he comes up the stairs. This movie, he stuffs his mouth full of what, what's supposed to be Tic Tacs, vitamin D's. I, I don't know. What the hell is going on here? Oh, that look she gives Ray. Yep, she definitely wants the R A E to the motherfucking D. We get a scene of Ray being followed by the hitman, and, and I did not put that music in. That is added in. That's in the movie itself. Uh, I 
no idea if it's like stock footage or he, he took it from some movie, but it's just so out of place with everything else. I love it. <laughs> Wave to the camera, say hello. <laughs> this movie's too much. We're obviously trying to build tension here, but no, that's not exactly happening. We get a cut to a ride that says freestyle. My goodness, more symbolism. <laughs> oh, this hitman dropping his gun. Again, like I mentioned earlier, he makes the hitman in Mulholland Drive look like Agent 47. <laughs> oh boy. See Raid walk down the slope here, it looks back at the sign of freestyle and it's upside down? Fucking morons, got the sign upside down. Fucking moron. How the hell did that happen? What happened with the hitman? Just decided not to? <sighs> Raid meets up earlier with the producer he talked to on the lawn who wasn't giving him any gigs, and boy. <laughs> We got a little more information here about how it's been 10 fucking years, where it's 32, still hasn't had this moment. Everyone's calling him a freak. He says he, he just might end at Kurt Cobain style. Ugh. 32 years old, bro. The fuck's my prime man, man? Huh? It's been 10 fucking years, bro. 10 years, man. You're promoting the lamest motherfuckers on those radio stations, man. You're funding that shit, man. The fuck you on about, bro? Everywhere I go, they call me freak. He comes a freak. He's a freak. He's comes a freak. He's an Arab freak. I can't go anywhere, man, without someone calling me fucking freak, bro. So I'm gonna freak this shit up, bro. What the fuck's my prime man, man? Come here after 10 years, bro. Fucking 10 years takes you to fucking call me. What, because you hear me on radio, bro? It doesn't have to fucking be like this, bro. I'll end it like that. Kurt Cobain style, bro. Boy, and the government medicating him for 17 days. At least at this point, we could actually hear what's going on, which is a nice change of pace. Let me tell you a story, bro. I used to be married, bro. The last time I saw that bitch's face, man, was at her parents' house. Standing behind the gate. You know what the bitch told me, man? What? She looked at me and she says to me, I'm dreaming. I'm a loser and I'll never make it. So here I am today, man. He used to be married? I mean, I don't know if that, the truth to this if that actually happened, but my goodness, could you imagine what his, what his wife would have been like? That's so many questions. And, you know, said he was a loser, he was a dreamer, they will never make it, but he wants to see her bouncing next to that stage. This talk he has with the guy getting him gigs goes for about four minutes. It's much shorter than other things like the church, but again, definitely could have been chopped down in half or even more. Cut back to Hippie Girl giving Ray a phone call, mentioning she has a cell phone. I guess he left it the lunch the other day, so we actually have some continuity here, which is, hey, that's pretty good. She tells Ray to stand up for himself, and I guess maybe have that kangaroo blood he did as he saw them the other day. But yeah, just kind of tells him to stand up for himself and be a man. And yeah, not much is seen. She gets called to go to work. Again, the scene was fine. It was quick to the point. Yeah, and it got its point across. Again, it kind of repeats itself, but that's the story of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus Christ this movie so here we go in some parking lot and here's our uh, hitman with a, with a gun just filming out in daylight I, knowing, knowing this movie just being shot out in public I'm not sure if they let anyone know about this Jesus Christ I really hope someone didn't know what was going on here he's got several clear shots at raid when he's at the ATM machine and he doesn't do anything. More clear shots here and none are taken and you hear the police siren going on in the background. Fuck. Wonder if someone said, hey, yeah, uh, there's a, uh, looks like someone's got a gun over here. We're not sure what's really going on. Cut to hippie girl at work at the bar, here with her boss. And then of course we've got Ray just peeking in. <laughs> oh my goodness. Her boss starts making more advances on her and she's rejecting it. There's just Ray watching outside. And what the hell is with this music? Can I get a green? Raid, is, did you produce this? Did you get this from somewhere else? So many questions. This movie. Hippie girl quits a job, leaves. 
So their boss has advantage, and <laughs> Raid's just standing outside. <laughs> you know, they just talk and, and walk off. Again, Raid not showing himself to be a hero. He could have stepped in and helped, but nope. Not standing up for her. Cut to the old man from the record company who wants Raid dead. This must be the Gadinsky or Galinsky or whatever they called guy, and <laughs> who's the best sugar daddy ever, as mentioned by this fine young lady. I'll have my chauffeur taking you to the airport express. Thanks, babe. You're the best sugar daddy I've ever had. I don't know what I'd do without you. More great raid bead serenade us as we cut to Australian E as once again he's back out looking for raid. And he tell runs into some Arabic guys and that's what they know raid just because he's He's Lebanese, so of course they would, wouldn't they? Ah, oh, this movie. They de deny knowing Raid, but no, actually they do. They do know Raid, and they warn him that someone's coming for him. These two guys go after Australian E, throw him down an alleyway, and they're thinking that he's a cop, so they're trying to tell him that he's from the record agency. Oh, but here comes the... <laughs> Oh, this scene. Here comes the record producer driver, and we get our little fight scene. Great choreography and effects. <laughs> I'm just wondering where the driver just came from out of nowhere. Uh, well, what to expect with this movie, you know. Uh, back to the producers looking for Raid and <laughs> showing people, you know, pictures. I, again, I'm guessing these aren't actors, they're just random people they just went up to and filmed. There's actually a generally funny part where it goes up to these horses and asks if they know Raid. I actually found that's quite funny. Of course, we get a woman waving in the background at the camera. Good stuff. While well, they keep searching, asking people if they know Raid, <gasps> Raid walks past him. <laughs> oh no, look around, turn. Oh, just missed him. Funny jacket guy, the driver, an Australian E meetup, and he mentions it's the 13th. Again, we have that date. Here comes their boss who gets a little bit angry at them, but he mentions there's a Lebanese festival on the 13th. So of course, Raid being Lebanese will be there. Of course he will. Cutting back to Galinsky, Gadinsky, but Gabinsky out on his balcony enjoying a smoke and a drink. And yep, that's about it. <laughs> the shot is so great. The slow motion, them all walking together. The music, oh, Raid, mwah, beautiful. Ah, uh, that marvelous jacket returns. I'm so curious to where he picked that up. They're at the Lebanese festival, just thinking Rain might be there. And hey, they run into the, the two guys they beat up the other day. Good stuff. It's all good, though. They're on good terms. Gerdinsky on the phone, clearly talking to Raid, saying a lady's coming to see him. Yes? Hello, the reception downstairs. In walks the woman earlier in the movie who came to talk to Raid at his house. She's looking for money, about $25,000 from Grudinsky here. She asks for the money tomorrow by 2 p.m. And she asks it twice. When do you want the money? Probably by tomorrow would be good. What time? 2 p.m. Well, I'll see what I can do. By tomorrow. What time? Hmm. It can be done. Did they take two takes and Ray didn't edit one out? Is he forgetful, this old man? Uh, who, who knows anymore? <laughs> uh, we're getting to the end of this movie. Oh, so close now. She leaves to go get another friend to bring up, but it's Raid. The, the famous rapper himself. Well, if it isn't the famous rapper himself. Surprised to see me. They have an argument about stuff. Down go the curtains. Hmm. Raid starts talking about this guy's is Jewish, about a Jewish conspiracy. 
starts talking about this guy, how Gadinsky, Belinsky, Zhadinsky has fucked up, but he could fix it. I guess if he signs Raid, that's what he's going for. <laughs> Raid leaves, he leaves the girl behind, and then, <laughs> oh boy, we get these weird firework sounds, and we get Raid's bank account information again. This girl catches up to him, and they go outside the place, and oh boy, here's paparazzi. Here comes the paparazzi scene. This is a gold mine of information, and with so many answers come so many more questions. Oh, Raid. Is it true that you sent a tape to the military headquarters in Queensland in 2006? Yes. Was that the same tape that you sent in 2001? We get some paparazzi questions here, like in 2006, sending to the military a video of Queensland that mentioned the same one in 2001, which I think he's referring to is the video he sent to the record producer then. Is it true that you are affiliated with the terrorism? No, I'm not gay. <laughs> oh, this, there, there are a lot of great lines in this movie. This one actually just might be my favorite. <laughs> I'm not gay. He's not really with terrorism. Oh, boy. Oh, Raid. You're a funny guy sometimes. More questions about the Crown Casino hostage situation, which uh, I guess at this point is over a decade when filming this. We get this male reporter asking the same questions he did earlier about this videotape he sends to Queens troops in Queensland, and also the same tape in 2001. And but the additional question of does he think sending these tapes to the military headquarters saved lives? Do you believe that that information saved any Aussie troops? Guaranteed, hundred percent. Thank you. Awesome. Gives so many questions to what was on this videotape. More classic raid freestyling here about concussions and stuff. Because uh, I don't know, maybe they just assumed too soon, and like they just assumed too soon, their assumptions were all wrong. But now the repercussions coming back on them, and the mind's going to be full of concussions, minds full of concussion time. True, my repercussions coming through. What do they call them? It's true. Raids off to the club to do some singing. Yeah. Everyone seems to be gathering at this place where Raid's going to perform at outside the club. He meets Australian E and one of the other record producers. I had to rewind this part a couple of times to make sure I heard right. The legs girl won the red dress earlier. The way it, it sounds like she got abducted? We got the Melbourne, we had Sonia, real pretty agent. She's gone, where is she? Okay, they do clarify that she's gone. Yeah, right. Yo, we lost an agent in this south here. She's real pretty. She's gone. We don't know where she's gone. She's gonna handle Abducted. I get so many questions. Where? What happened to her? Come on, guys. I see at this point with also someone disappearing, what happened to his buddy Nemo? You know, the guy with the, wanting to go to Turkey or the U.S. about interior decorating? Oh, they actually had something going there for a second with them, and they just dropped them. Oh, well. Story of this movie. One of Raid's earlier haters, the one he made him say R-A-E to the motherfucking D, tells him he can't rap. All of a sudden, this guy comes up, and he gives Raid the mic. I love it. Which, of course, leads to Raid just getting up in his face and starts rapping his next song. And this one, well, it's another classic Raid track. I had to look at this part for a bit. So we had this guy earlier standing up to the side of the club menacingly. I'm like, wait, is this the, the hitman from before? But clean shaven, maybe a little clean up, got his hat on. Yeah, I guess this is him. And he, <laughs> with the power of music, he decides to leave. Doesn't do anything with Raid. Isn't that great with the power of music? I love this if you feel like you've been entertained. I mean, how could you not be entertained after watching this? Are you not entertained? He wants to make a sequel to this. Oh boy. Well, we'll get more to that later. Again, we get his bank account information. Again, I don't know if this will actually work if you try sending to it. Who knows? We get the credits and we get those subliminal flashes and that's the background for this during the, the credits. Some people we get their name, full name. Some people we just get their first names. I would love to talk with some of these people and just know what was it like working on this movie. Saving the best for last. Copyright until the end of time. Oh, Raid, you're just so crazy. And so concludes Still Flowing the Movie. If you wanna boom, boom, win the boom, the boom, then believe you me, motherfuckers, when I breathe, you bleed. 
What can you say about still flowing? It's, well, it's interesting to say the least. Now, I wouldn't quite put it under the category of so bad that's required viewing, more along the lines of The Room by Tommy Wiseau or anything done by Neil Breen. But there is something there. There's something utterly, utterly fascinating. Now, unfortunately, there's the issue of the terrible sound mixing, a lot of situations where you can't hear any dialogue, especially the church scene, which is really too bad and takes away a lot of things from it. At the movie sitting over two hours, there's, well, of course, there's so much you could cut, but easily taking 30, 40 minutes of this movie would make it much more watchable and enjoyable in the long run for people who want to enjoy it more along the lines of The Room or anything by Neil Breen. But we have what we have. It's at least worth watching once to really delve more into the mind of this individual. Now that we've taken a look at, at the film itself, let's look more into who Raid is by piecing together various information that's given about him. Just who exactly is Raid Milky? The rest here is pieced together from, from stuff he has said, stuff I found on the internet, stuff from interviews. Again, it can't be completely verified. Some come straight from Raid himself, but take it for what you will. Uh, he was born of Lebanese descent, apparently Melbourne, in 1978. It's pieced together at the beginning of the movie. It does show an image saying 1978 with Raid. There is one of his songs called Famous My Story, where he talks about the end that and shows a picture of presumably his mother about maybe how she isn't exactly proud of him or at least she doesn't show it. Be a mystery, but in the entertainment side, the video was like the greatest kiss you see. And I know deep down inside, my mom respects what I did and what I believe in, even though she doesn't really show it. And also in the song, he mentioned that his brother and his father have passed away. No doubt about it, if my brother and father were still alive, they would be popping champagne bottles and celebrating the situation with me every day. Looking at an interview he did with Sneaky Meg, his brother overdosed on heroin when he was about 13 or 14. His father tried to commit suicide shortly afterwards, and it sounds like it was unsuccessful. He tried a couple times. And then a few years later, his father did pass away. You know, I was uh, 13, 14 years old uh, when my older brother passed away on heroin. He ended up ODing, dealing with that at the age of 13, 14, and uh, you know, dad tries to pop a lot of pills, commit suicide once or twice. These little things, man, become big things, and these big things become your life. And it's a struggle, they call it. Dealing with it is unexplainable, man. And then you're with your father, then he passes away within the same four, four or five year period. That's a, it's a different struggle completely because he's your, he's your best friend, man. So like, these two deaths in the family would uh, put you on a different level. I will also be posting the sources for these material in the description so you can take a look for yourself. Now, this 2001 incident with Michael Godinsky, which of course, back at the beginning of the movie, they were poking fun at with the different pronunciation of Godinsky. Uh, Mr. Godinsky has been granted an intervention order by the Victorian Magistrates Court. Godinsky. No, Mr. Gwadinsky. Gwadinsky has been granted. Now, Michael Gwadinsky is a Australian record producer. In 2001, Raid set a package containing a CD and a videotape. Now, in the interview, Raid does a sneaky mag. He does bring it up, but when asked what was on the videotape, he never mentions, saying the following. Yeah, what else was in the box? The video and the CD. The video is quite uh, entertaining, man. What was on the video? Entertainment, man. What? I don't know what is what, but we know what is what. What the fuck? <laughs> we just struck. <laughs> goosebumps. What was on that? Goosebumps. What was on the video? What a goosebumps. <laughs> it caused him that fucking goosebumps, man. 
there's been some interesting developments with RAID. When I first started this video and got distracted by other things but coming back to it. One of them being an interview I found on his main YouTube channel where he sits down from someone from a local magazine to talk about himself. And the interview is, I went through it so you don't have to, it's about 60 minutes long. Now the problem is sound quality is a little iffy, they're outside at a restaurant, you can hear other people in the background, it's not mic'd properly, some parts are hard to hear, but to give me some interesting insights into who Raid is. Raid has an interesting story of going from riches to rags at around the age of 10. He was born to a very wealthy family. His father was running a very successful real estate agency. Raid mentions that he has a half brother and sister. His father was married once before. When Raid was about 11 in the late 80s, there was a recession in Australia, which led to his father's company losing a lot of money. And his older brother, as he mentioned in one of his songs, did OD on heroin. And he says around 11, they start to get mentally unstable. He says the word skitzing a lot. What's really interesting in this interview is he talks about how he actually went homeless as a result of making steel flowing because he had to use up all his money. He mentioned that he was addicted to pot by the age of 14. Uh, he doesn't do that anymore. He's dabbled with ice and ecstasy. When he talks about romance, he said the most meaningful relationship he had with someone was with a hooker. And I found that very fascinating. Now, unfortunately, this part in the interview he talks about is a little difficult to hear. Um, but it is really interesting. And when he's talking about his current status with, with women, he quotes the Whitney Houston song, says he just wants to dance until he finds the right person. I have to say in this interview, he comes across pretty level-headed. It's very different from his music and from watching the movie. He's a big fan of hip-hop, of Dr. Dre. He really wants to tour the States. Everything that you hear from him is done by him. All the production, all the videos, that's all him. As a filmmaker, he says his biggest influence is Sylvester Stallone with the Rocky movies. That underdog, maybe that's what he's trying to go for some parts in the movie as the, the underdog. And, and I guess he has been an underdog for most of his life. Now, was he married? He mentions it in the movie. And in this interview, he does confirm it. It's just a very quick little nonchalant thing. But he does mention that he was married to someone briefly for a year. In this interview, he talks about the Gandinsky tape. He is a little elusive about what it really is. He gives insight that there was like a 55-minute freestyle of him. Whether that's true or not, he says maybe one day he'll load, upload it to the internet. Now, again, it's been many years since this interview came up in 2013, but it is interesting. Again, he talks also about the Crown Casino, where he was freestyling for three and a half hours for the bomb squad, and all he wanted was a hot chocolate, which he mentions also in the other interview. After about 2015, Raid's input greatly reduced. There's a, a bunch of videos you could find of him through Facebook Live or any kind of those live streaming services. This period seems like he got more into drugs. It's really hard to say. There was a lot less input here. In mid-November 2018, there was a couple of posts, and that was about that was it for a while. A Reddit thread talked about how he ended up in jail. Now, the funny thing is, as I was still recording this as I took a while, just a few days ago, when I'm finishing this up, Ray did get out of jail, and he has a new album coming out. And it's just really, really interesting timing with everything going on. And of course, well, you could go check out the tracks, but it's the same old Ray that you know and, well, <laughs> love. Maybe that's a strong word, but remember with what he does. To conclude, Ray Milky is a fascinating individual who definitely marches to the beat of his own drum, literally and figuratively. Of course, listening to his rhymes and his music, him being on time by being off time. There's a lot earlier I talked about how he reminds me of a Tommy Wiseau or a Neil Breen, where he definitely marches to the beat of his own drum. And there's something really fascinating about that. I think people need to give Raid more credit on that front. He's someone more interesting to study, not just in the so bad it's good but just that passion that he has that you could tell it's all him well i hope you enjoyed this look into raid milky check out the movie briefly even if you just want to kind of flip through it 
maybe make a clips compilation. I couldn't really seem to find one on that. But he is an utterly fascinating figure that I think more people should look into. I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Boulder Punch. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. Well, I'd say leave a thumbs down, but if you got to this point in the video, wow, good for you. This is way longer than I thought it was going to be. But anyways, if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks for watching. You know I deserve this, preserve this. Even the birds agree. They're singing a herd of Jesus concerned as me. My friend is feared for patrol entrepreneur and I'm causing third degrees to the G's. Try to be like me and the birds agree. I'm just confirming these. I'm like an urban G, bourbon G's. I'm burning G's. I got the words of bacon, I'm burning me. So I keep on serving G's. Now blaze getting hot in the third degree. You're bourbon G's. Because I'm getting hot in the Harry Potter. Now blaze getting hot in the fourth degree. So flood north sea. Of course, you know, remorse to me. Of course I got divorced to see. Because I'm Mike's wife with a bitch. <laughs> so I keep on serving.